Now I know what it really is. It's energy in life. Yeah, it's like the sun inside of you. Avatar Aang and Zuko, on the true origins of, firebending. Consumed by your own inferno, the dangers of, corrupted sexuality. We all know the story. We get horny. We let ourselves, indulge in fantasy. We ejaculate. We feel bad after, instinctively knowing we did something wrong, yet, we do it again and, again. And so the destructive, cycle continues, taking us lower and lower with each, ejaculation. But this isn't so much the fault of the energy itself, as what we are coloring it with. Oftentimes we, are imprinting lust, fear, desire and other negative, vibrations on our sexuality, causing it to become, poisoned and stagnant. It becomes pulled in our, balls, building up like a dam demanding release. All, the while, it is turning rancid through focusing on, carnal images, derogation of others and selfish self, satisfaction. What was meant to be a source of life, and creation has been perverted, there's a reason, the word means what it does, into a force of death, and destruction. Under such circumstances, ejaculation is all but, inevitable. The alternative is worse, the energy, built, up and poisoned, breaks loose, wrecking havoc, on the person's life. But this is merely the final, outcome of an irresponsible and irreverent use of, a natural force, just like how nuclear power without, sufficient containment, management and respect, for the mighty materials involved inevitably, leads to, catastrophic meltdown. Power, in any form, including sexual, bears greater, opportunity, but also greater responsibility. But I don't explain these dangers to condemn your, sexuality, no more than I condemn the use nor nature of fire, I explain them because understanding what can go wrong and how to manage that is an essential step towards doing something right. You have to know the stove can burn you and how to effectively manage heat before you can make a beautiful meal. So it is with sexuality. Honored and directed properly, this energy can make all your dreams come true. How? Glad you asked. Mastering sexual energy, the analogy of the internal combustion engine, think of a puddle of gasoline. It contains enormous energy. It can do so much. Now set it aflame. It looks pretty and you get a nice fire, but it doesn't do much. It guts itself out. At its worst, it burns everything around it. This is sexual energy in its uncontrolled state. Now put that same gasoline inside an engine and light it again. Suddenly, you have a miracle of transportation, a vehicle that can take you anywhere you need to go. What's the difference? The fire is focused, harnessed towards a chosen cause. So how is this done? Continuing the analogy, we will break it down like a car into five basic steps. The engine. It all starts with the engine. As stated before, it is important to direct the gasoline so that it serves creative and productive goals instead of burning wildly and running amok. This is the area of strategy by which you begin to transmute and master sexual energy. Taking cold showers, practicing energy, circulation, doing meditation, engaging in healthy activity and practicing a hobby or career are all means by which this is done. You must give it an outlet, otherwise the energy will build up and explode the engine and you with it. This is essential if you intend to practice semen retention for long. In this analogy, the engine is the means by which you harness and direct sexual energy. This includes building up energy, directing it, and releasing what doesn't serve you at this time. The gasoline, next is the gasoline. You got it already, otherwise, you wouldn't be here. But is it clean and effective? Low quality gasoline may run your car, but it carries dangers of its own. It wears out your engine and emits toxic fumes. So it is with sexual energy still, poisoned by associations with porn, neediness and unresolved traumas. Detaching from porn and low vibration women, practicing self-love and meeting your own needs and performing inner work to reconcile with past sexual and romantic injuries are essential if you are to avoid relapse and self-destruction down the line. In this analogy, the gasoline is not just your sexual energy itself, but what other energies and thoughts are tied to it. Purifying and refining your sexual energy allows you to use it more effectively and safely. 
The body and chassis. Next are the guts and skin of the vehicle itself. There are many types of vehicles, for many different needs. What kind of vehicle are you building? A. Family minivan, a sports car, a submarine, a tank, a rocket, something else? What is its purpose? What is your envisioned vehicle made to do? What are its strengths and weaknesses? What can the structure withstand and where does it fail? What cooling systems are in place to prevent potential disaster? In this analogy, the body and chassis are the belief, systems, mindsets and goals that surround your sexual energy, as well as what it's being used for. In turn, this includes inner awareness of your intentions, capabilities and points of failure as well, as the work to improve on all these repairs and maintenance. Next are the things that go into responsibly driving a vehicle and keeping it in good shape. Know your strengths and your current limits. How much sexual energy can you hold and express before beginning to endanger yourself? How far can you go before beginning to burn out? When and why do you begin to run into walls and make major mistakes? These signs of oncoming failure all stem from an accurate assessment of your current capabilities and delusions of invulnerability. Many relapses happen when we push ourselves too far and forget what brought us this far in the first place. In this analogy, this is the upkeep that goes into competently managing your sexual energy. Besides, making sure that you're continuing the previous steps consistently. This also includes periods of rest and recovery. In exercise, for example, obtaining proper rest and nourishment are as important to building muscle as the workout itself. Cooling down your hot sexual fires with meditation, prayer, time in nature, healthy pleasurable activities and time with people balances you out, refreshing you so you can make the next push forward. The driver, finally we come to the driver. You got the car, you have a good idea how to drive it and where you want to go. Now is where you take off the training wheels and apply this in day-to-day -day life with all the challenges, distractions and opportunities it involves. In this analogy, we refer to you yourself. Do you have a clear sense of purpose? Do you know how you're going to get there? Are you aware of your surroundings? Do you recognize the dangers around you and know how to handle them? Greatness is a magnifier. You will attract more of what you want and have the capability to get it, but the dangers are greater too. You must be observant and discerning. Trust your instincts and whatever higher power is right for you. And yes, for you men out there looking consciously or subconsciously for women, rest assured there is great opportunity out there and danger. Men greater than us, past and present, have been ruined by the wrong woman. Don't be one of them. See with your heart, not your eyes, and trust your gut always. Honoring sexual energy, leading yourself in, others with strength, mastery, and love. Finally, I repeat the core message of responsibility. With your sexual energy with this, in the end, it isn't just for your own gain. Nor is it just a tool. Like nature, it is beautiful, mighty, and sometimes dangerous. It is life itself, and we are made to infuse the world with it. We are born to be so much more than slaves to our temporal urges. We are all children of mighty warriors and kings. We have the power to break the chains, stop the cycle of destruction inside and out and create a better world with our own two hands. We can defy our urges, stand strong in the face of temptation, cast aside the toxic women who refuse to rise with us. We can defy seeming fate, laugh in the face of despair, Challenge those tyrants who dare think they can master us. For it begins with mastering ourselves. We must lead ourselves first. And that begins with leading the wonderful, miraculous sexual energy that makes us men in the first place. And when it's all done and the battle is won, we will stand together on the other side, fathers and leaders and brothers all winning a new and brighter world with our own sweat and blood. Till next time, brother, burn bright.